In this video, we're going to go through the three dependable lenticular photo producer. Let's assume we have taken some picture from the three dependable DALI. Let's start the program by right-clicking the three dependable icon on the desktop and choose the Run as Administrator option. We may want to utilize the whole screen by double-clicking the title of the window to enter into full screen mode. As you can see, the screen is divided into a few sections. The big icons represent the commonly used tasks. For example, this is for importing the pictures into the program. This is for aligning the pictures to a common focal point. This is for defining the print size. This is for reviewing the results. This is for interlacing the results. This is for printing images. And lastly, this is for conducting a pitch test. In this tutorial, we're going to go through these tasks one by one. Hidden within the system menu, there are some functions which are duplicates of the functions of the toolbar we have just mentioned, and a couple of additional functions that we're going to cover as well. In this section, we can find some layer manipulation function icons. There are also some image enhancement functions which we will not cover in this tutorial. Step 1. Import the pictures. Navigate to the folder where the pictures are stored and select the pictures for processing. Normally, you just need to press the Ctrl A combination to select all the pictures in a folder. If you have selected more than what you need, don't worry about them because you can always delete them later in the program. Once the pictures are imported, you can scroll through each one of them by dragging the mouse along the thumbnails. It's always a good idea to maximize the screen usage by pressing the Fit button here. Whoops, she blinked on this one, so let's delete it. Let's try again by scrolling. Aha, these four pictures should not be included. We can delete them one by one, or we can press the control button to multi-select. Or even faster by using the shift select to select the first and the last to be deleted. Okay, it looks much better now. Step 2. Set a focal point. Next, we're going to find a common point on the first and the last picture to be the focal point. Consider a focal point where there's no shift between the left and the right eyes. In other words, we're going to define a point such that when we blink our left and right eye alternatively, there won't be any shift of position. Finding a good focal point is crucial. If the focal point is defined improperly, the final result will be disappointing. In this example, the focus should be on the person and we want her to be the clearest in the whole picture. Since the body thickness of the model is relatively small compared with the whole depth, we can simply find an easily identifiable point on her. It can be the corner of her lips, or how about the earring here? On pressing the OK button, we're commanding the program to align the in-between pictures for us automatically. We can now preview the result again. A better way to preview is by pressing the preview button on the toolbar. We can also make a minor adjustment by bringing the focal point to the front a little or move to the back a little. Step 3. Define the print size. By defining the print size, we're telling the program how to crop the pictures. After specifying the width and height of the print size, we can drag the mouse to create a size frame. You don't have to be precise at this point on where you want to release the mouse button because the size frame can be resized proportionally and moved around later. For example, we can define the final print area by dragging the corners or the middle points along the edges of the size frame. We also want to make sure the first and last picture are within the size frame. If the size frame is outside of this picture, we'll need to bring it back. While in this case, we have plenty of room and we want to focus on the lady. So let's shrink it this way. The first picture is OK, the last picture is OK, and bingo! At this point, you may want to preview the result using a pair of anagraph glasses. You can pause the video now to get the glasses ready if you want. The program will divide the picture sequence into half. You can experiment which point from the left half and which point from the right half make more sense. Remember, too deep a depth can sometimes make the viewer feel dizzy. 
Okay, using the leftmost and rightmost doesn't seem to work in this case. How about this? Cool. So let's delete one, two, three, four, five from the left, and one, two, three, four, five from the right. If you want, you can save the inner graphic image for someone to review as a JPEG file. Let's go ahead and delete some layers. Step 4. Conduct a pitch test. Next, we're going to conduct a pitch test for the lenticular lens we're going to use. For example, we're going to use 42 LPI for the lens we have. For the first trial, we can use 0 0.1 as the delta. Let's save it and print it. When we print, we need to configure the printer to match settings we need. Always set the printer to print at its highest resolutions. Also set the correct paper orientation. The warning dialog. It's okay for the calibration sheet to be cropped a little. Now overlay the lens to test it. From this trial, we can see the best values around the 41.10 neighborhood. So let's conduct another run with that value as the starting point and use the most precise delta of 0.01. Again, let's save it and print it. You can print it from Photoshop if you want, but the result is going to be the same. This time, we confirm the pitch value is indeed 41.1. As a matter of fact, it's a little bit subjective here. I feel it is 41.1, but someone else may feel it should be around 41.09. But the good thing is the minor difference is not going to affect the final result too much. So let's use 41.1. Step 5. Interlace the pictures. With the result of the pitch test, we can start to interlace the pictures. Press the fifth icon to bring up the dialog for specifying the pitch value. You can accept the defaults by keeping pressed the next button. Give a file name. And there you go. Let's take a look at the interlaced file. We can see the vertical lines by zooming on the picture. And let's take a look at the resolutions. Where does this number 616.5 come from? Okay, let's do some simple math here. Going back to the program, we know we still have 15 layers. And 15 times 41.1. Hey presto, it's also 616.5. I'm sure you will agree this is not magic, but logic. Now we can print the interlaced image for lamination. Let's go back to the program. Sometimes, although not very often, automatic alignment may not work on every picture. In that case, you can do some minor adjustment. First, you turn the layer to be semi-transparent so you can see through it. Then, you can change the position by dragging the mouse, or by press the Ctrl and arrow key combination to move the position left and right, up and down. With all the hard work, we can now save the session as a PSD file. When we need to modify the project next time, we can simply open the PSD file instead. This concludes the tutorial on how to use the 3D printable lenticular photo producer. And I hope this has been educational for you. For any questions, please visit our website at www.3dependable.com.